is going to jump into the driver tech module and show you how electronic logs go on the driver tech. All right, so uh, we're going to take a look at the actual driver tech unit and go over its basic operation. When you turn the unit on or when the truck powers up, this is the screen you're going to get. It's the log on. So you're going to need to implant your driver code. So let me go ahead and put the test code in here. All right, so now we're going to take a look at the driver tech unit itself. Um, we've got all these different icons here to look at, but what we're looking at is the hours of service right over here. We touch on that. That brings up our main page on the logs. So we've got the US 8. Uh, this first tab here is uh, our our countdown clocks to show us at a glance what we have and do not have as far as hours go. Uh, 70 hour, 11, uh, 14, so each of these are counting down from what uh, they started at, 70, 11, 14, and 8. 10 hour reset, that starts counting down as soon as you go off duty or in the sleeper. The split reset, uh, that can give you information if you're uh, qualified for a split reset, that's the 8-2 split for sleeper berth. Um, then we have our 34 hour reset. We used to have a lot more information needed for 34, so we have some extra buttons that go into that. Uh, but right now uh, shows that uh, I'm, I've been on duty and I would need at least 34 hours off to complete that reset. Uh, the 30 minute reset button down here, you can see with a little cruiser here, that, is, uh, that starts counting down anytime you either go off duty or in the sleeper as well. Uh, so that at a glance, if you're on a break, you can just look at this main page and know uh, how many minutes left you have before you take uh, your, your 30 minute is up or your 10 minutes up. Uh, down here at the bottom, we have our, uh, our off-duty, sleeper berth driving, on-duty trip info. Those affect today's log. So at a, uh, at a quick glance, if you're just uh, in the truck, you just need to get on duty or right now or get off-duty or whatnot, you just hit that button and it affects today's log. Uh, also, we have today's log right over here. Uh, that button drags us right over to the graph, and uh, so it's a very quick way to get to it. So more timers. We want to open this one up and talk about it a little bit. Again, more information about the 34-hour Reset, uh, hours gained back from 70. A little discussion on this. The driver tech unit does not give you a whole list of your hours gained back from 70, so you need to keep your own recap if you're going to be recapping, because the only thing this actually adds together would be uh, your drive time and on duty time from midnight exactly eight days ago. It doesn't continue that anywhere. So uh, keeping that recap for yourself is really important. Um, um, if you had the 16 hour exception, that would be available, and then reject remain remaining projected drive time, so another added glance little timer there. And I'm going to go back and that just takes me back to this main page. Um, this uh, is going to tell us at a quick glance I I exactly how many hours we have left or what our duty status is and uh, of course this identifies the driver. But these other tabs up here, we're going to go through them one at a time. The logs tab, this shows your prior seven. So prior seven yesterday you can see that it is uncertified and then today is the one in blue these check marks mean they've been certified or signed and I will be demonstrating how to do that a little bit later on uh, so again to the recap if you're looking over here um, what that timer on the more timers was showing was what would be in this column here so if you were on a multiple day trip and you needed to know hours coming back over several midnights you'd have to add these columns here the driving and on duty to get those totals coming back to you as midnights rolled through uh, now we're going to go look at the DVIR tab. DVIRs, you can do a DVIR uh, at any time it prompts you to do a DVIR or you can come in here and add a DVIR uh, we are only uh, required to do DVIRs when we actually have a defect. So we're not doing them every day anymore. But when we do do them, we do need to go ahead and certify that within 24 hours. So here are DVIRs with defects, and here's some just with no defects. These were uh, trainings that I did showing people how to enter a, uh, a DVIR. You can click on any DVIR to see the defects that are listed at any time as uh, and then if it's certified you can click on it you can see the DVR the the um, the DVAR but you cannot uh, add or subtract anything to it so adding a DVIR is as simple as clicking a button here uh, any trailer that you have listed in your trip info is going to come up over here and down here look here we've got this hours of service not certified uh, it will give you uh, warnings to certify your logs and if you don't certify them within 24 hours it'll get those uh, those little um, uh, flash flash buttons coming up um, so here I'm gonna go ahead and add a DVIR we've got a defect uh, we've got a trailer listed and I'm gonna add a defect so um, general truck condition 
We've got drop-down menus. I want to say that it was a defect with the truck cab. And again, I have another drop-down. All these drop-down menus keep you from having problems uh, with having to type in so much information. So those things that we usually use and usually comment, then uh, that gives us a way to put those in there really easily. Uh, uh, for the drop-down menus, you have the inspection list, so this will help you learn where to find defects. So if you know you have a problem with the battery, um, you can come in here and find battery under um, C, truck exterior, and there's the battery. So now when we add the DVIR, I know to go to truck exterior and then use the drop-down menu there to find the battery defect and add those in. Those do go to the shop, so it's a good idea to make sure you're clear and precise about any defects that you list. Um, so we're going to move on to the options tab right over here. We have the options tab, request logs, send logs, and change trucks. There's many different reasons why we might use these buttons, uh, simply because the, the driver tech units in the trucks themselves communicate with the mainframe, and sometimes we have to uh, encourage that process by either requesting logs be sent, sending logs, or uh, the change trucks button is what we use when we switch trucks to make sure that all of our driver tech information uh, goes to the new unit that we are are moving into or leaves the unit that we're moving out of. Fax and email logs button over here. We're going to use this when we're in a roadside audit. If the officer doesn't want to get up in the truck and actually look at the logs themselves, then they're going to want us to send them to the way station. So this is the button we do that with. If we have down here our little device indicator that has a little red X over it, that would mean we do not have communication, which would happen potentially if you were in an inspection barn. So if this indicator here has a little red X over it, then you'd have to call uh, Pride or, uh, or your uh, driver tech to have them send down from the mainframe those logs to the way station. Uh, the other reason why we might use the fax and email log button is to send our logs to ourselves for our tax purposes. Drivers should keep copies of those logs. Uh, so there's the fax and email logs button. Now, uh, in addition to that, if you don't have a fax or email to send those logs to yourself, uh, just come to the safety department and we will save those for you in some format, either uh, download them to a disk or to a flash drive or something like that. But uh, there is that tool for us to use. Our next button is view violations. If you had any violations that would show on any of the eight days present on your log, this would show you where those violations were and explain them. Our change mode button. Here we've got roadside audit and personal conveyance. So when we're being inspected, we want to go ahead to the roadside audit mode. Uh, when we set the brakes in the truck, the, the log puts us uh, into an on-duty not driving status. So we would simply open up that status and submit the comment inspection. Then we would go ahead and uh, send our logs and then come into roadside audit and click that roadside audit. That's going to um, gray out a bunch of different things that the DOT does not need during an audit, one of which is the US-8 tab. So puts us into a mode where that uh, blocks out that entire page. Um, the other thing it does is we're going to go here to today's log. Uh, this button here is usually, it says edit, and now it says view. When you're in, et in the roadside audit mode, no edits can be made to your log. However, if you are um, forgetful and you drive away from that way station and you're still in the roadside audit mode, the truck will put your drive line into place. You just won't be able to add anything or change any statuses until you go back into the normal mode. So we're going to go back and put ourselves in normal mode so we can continue with this demonstration. Back to the options tab up here. Change mode. I want my normal mode and it makes me unlock the system. So we're going to go ahead and enter a code. And this is the test code here unlock and now we have the availability of all those things. Change mode, again the other thing that we have in there is that personal conveyance. Um, in order to use personal conveyance you want to go off duty then come in here and click yourself into personal conveyance, do your driving and then go back to normal mode uh, so that you, you're only running the personal conveyance clock during the time that you're actually driving. All right, let's look at that last tab. The last tab we have to investigate is the carrier tab. Carrier tab gives us our carrier information, pride transport, our address, our DOT number, and then our terminal location and uh, our terminal time. This is the time that the log is logging on. We only have the one terminal, so you should only have pride transport in there, but this does tell the officer that we are on mountain standard time. 
Okay, so now let's actually take a look at a log. We're going to go over here to the Logs tab, and looky here. So while we were away, somebody changed something in this log. That's what this is about. Check marks mean I have made and certified a log. A star like this means somebody at the mainframe has made an alteration to my log. Uh, the rule governing logs is that drivers do their own logs. And so what this means is I have full knowledge if someone at the mainframe has done anything at all, has done anything at all with my logs. So now I come in here, I want to look at this log and and check it out and make sure that whatever's there is true and correct. Once I've looked at it and I've certified it, then that goes away. That's saying whatever, whatever edits were made, I'm agreeing with them and it is a true and correct log of duty status. Um, so when we have these driver texts, we have so much uh, ability to go in here and, and edit and correct and make things uh, actually represent our day the way that the day happened. Uh, where a duty status exists where we're looking at it. We've got this little green line and it's going to say edit. Uh, this is on duty, trip info, West Valley City. Um, so I can hit the edit button and take a closer look at that. This is a trip info, uh, editing trip information. So at 6 a.m. at the location in West Valley City, I entered my bill of lading. And a bill of lading is going to be your pride load number or dispatch number. We use those words interchangeably here. You need to enter your co-driver if you had one and your trailer number and at this it says beginning of shift pre-trip inspection. You always want to make that comment and you could enter two statuses. You could enter trip info and then enter another status for pre-trip but it's just easier if you initially start a trip info and use the comment of pre-trip. So I'm going to go ahead and go back. I've looked at that. I see that I entered my information correctly. Now, uh, over here, I've got uh, where I've arrived at a location. It says on duty at 715 Far West. And then the next says off duty at 720. And I'm thinking, I'm looking at this log and thinking, you know, I, I was actually on duty for a lot longer than that. So I'm going to take that and edit that status from 720 to 725. So I'm going to get my cursor going up here and then go over here backspace out of there and enter a five. Uh, my status is off duty. You can see how you could, I could change that to on duty. I could change it to driving manual. You can select whatever you'd like. Uh, it's picked up the location far west. I show a break. I'm going to go ahead and submit that. So a status existed and I went ahead and changed it. Now if I wanted to add a status that did not exist, say, um, there was another point in time, say right at 8 o'clock for some reason I wanted to show that I went on duty. I'm going to take this button right here, add a duty status, and at 0800 I'm going to go on duty and it, it does default to on duty so you always, if you want something else you want to select otherwise. And it's picking up the location at far west so I don't need to worry about that and uh, my remark I'm going to say that um, I had inspection. We're just going to pick something. This drop down menu in the uh, on duty field gives us all of those things that we do the most so we don't have to do a lot of typing. So when I submit that status at 8 o'clock of on duty, it's going to have me on duty until I run into another status. And here's a little buttle button telling us that I have a, certi a log that is not certified, so we'll have to go take care of that. Um, but I don't think I want to stay on duty as long as that, so I'm going to add another status at 8.05. And I'm going to go off duty in Far West and submit that status. So now that looks a little weird, but you can see how we have the power to either edit a status that exists or delete a status uh, uh, that, or or delete a status. Uh, when you open the edit button, you do have a delete button for any status other than the drive line. So we're going to go back here. Now, if I look over this log, I see that it looks like it's correct. It looks like a, a rather a busy day, but uh, now that I know that the log is correct, first of all, I want to come up here and look at the trip info tab. Uh, once, uh, uh, before I certify, I want to make sure that that trip info is actually in there. Uh, this shows that I had two different trailers and three different loads. Well, that's interesting, but there's my trip info, and I always want to make sure that I have trip info before I certify my log. But as I see that this log is true and correct, I've got everything in there that I need, the trip info is in place, I'm going to hit the certify button and make sure that that is now sent to the mainframe. 
now we can see that that changed from a little star over there to a green check mark. I have certified that that log is true and correct, so whatever was done by the mainframe has now been accepted by the driver as, uh, as proper. I'm going to come to today's log now because I want to show you how to add trip info. We've got our Add a Duty Status button here and then our trip, Add Trip Info here. We're going to click on that Add Trip Info. Um, it's coming up with today's date and time right now and no GPS. So let me show you that. Anytime you have a computer uh, that, uh, that is not receiving GPS, it's going to give you that and you want to change because as you will know, when you're entering statuses on a logbook, you have to add the location and as well as what you're doing. So West, W-E, uh, S-T, we're going to get West Valley, Utah in here. And there it is. Uh, bill of lading, it's your bill of lading again is your pride load number. I'm just going to put something in there. Co-driver, okay, Steve is my co-driver here for orientation. And there's a trailer number and then again here is where we would select our pre-trip. You would also be using uh, trip info when you drop and hook because you're changing loads you're going to have to update the load number that you have in the trailer but in this case I'm just going to select the pre-trip and submit that status and here's where we get that prompt for would you like to review your DVIR and at this time I don't want to do that so there we go um, this log as I said earlier if you when you set the brakes it puts you on do duty not driving it's a a default status when you start driving you do not need to put yourself into a driving mode you do not need to enter a status when you have driven three miles it doesn't matter how fast or slow you are but once you hit three miles then the driver tech unit looks back sees when motion started and starts your drive line at the time your truck actually started rolling so when you're you're doing stuff you don't need to to mess around with putting yourself on the drive line just just let it do that um, and again it doesn't matter how fast or how slow you're going it simply puts you on that line you cannot edit driving but you can edit any other status so I can edit this status at this time right now and delete the status if I wanted to and the log has me in the sleeper until the moment at which I put the trip info in at this point. A few other things about the log. In your log program you have a list and this lists every status that is currently showing on the log. If you come up here to the time and you click the time it's going to give you a duration for the time of status uh, ran. So the sleeper berth has been running for 15 hours and 50 minutes and now the trip info I put that status in two minutes and 22 seconds ago. We have a little US 8 kind of um, recap of our log time here. Of course, we've got our trip info, and we always want to check that right before we certify. And now the anomalies. If the computer had a problem during the time uh, that you were driving or you, you had that log between midnight and midnight, uh, an anomaly should show up in here. So if uh, the technical department is working with you they may ask you to look at the anomalies and that can help them fix some problems that uh, you may not even are aware existed. Oh. Alright, to wrap things up we just want you to know that as you work with the driver tech unit and you have questions please bring them to the safety department. We do have driver tech assistance 24 hours a day, seven days a week, uh, so there's always someone either in Pride Safety Department or at driver tech. They can help you with questions, concerns, and issues. But definitely, don't be, hesitate to get a question asked. We'd rather help you through the problem uh, directly rather than going back and fixing a problem that's already developed. So um, get in there, play around with it, and develop some questions to come to us with. We expect questions, so don't feel shy. Bring them on, and we will answer everyone.